Oh, okay. There it is. All right, my people. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. This is Anna Renee, your love power goddess, and I am with you all on another very beautiful day. It is 20 minutes after 4 p.m. in the afternoon, okay? And I am about to do another setup of the Metuneto Metunetor Oracle Cards. And I am working on Sebek. Sebek. Okay, my people. And that's number eight of the Tree of Life, the Comedic Tree of Life, Sebek. The Dog Headed Man. Okay that aspect of the spirit of man that we compare at least our ancestors compared to canines <laughs> pretty much for the ability to be able to use language and to uh, speak words without necessarily understanding the words is a certain aspect of our spirits as human beings. Okay, number eight on the tree of life, Sebek. And so, my people, what I'm going to do is read from the Metuneter. See if I can put that there. There it is. All right, and so I have the Metuneter with me today, and we're going to be reading all the correspondences that deal with. The God Sebek. Okay. So I'm going to start with the Kamitic name of this is also Apuat, and that's A P U A T, or Anpu, Apuat, Anpu, and that's the Kamitic. The Canaanite name is Raphael, okay? These are the correspondences in all of the other metaphysical uh, melanated people's understandings of these aspects of the human spirit. In the Kabbalistical, it is Hod, H-O-D, Hod. And in Yoruba, it is Alegba and Eshu. Alegba and Eshu. Okay? So it corresponds to that spirit. Spirit of Eshu. The spirit of Alegba. And also in Indus Kush, it is Matangi or Matanji. And I spell it M A. T A N G I. Okay, it is the eighth sphere, sphere, planet Mercury, day Wednesday. Its color is saffron, red, and black, which is represented in this particular suit where it's showing both colors as you can see the yellow and the red is the only suit in the whole deck that shows two different colors <laughs> so it's also black the number is three the gems is emerald the time of year is the sidereal full moon in Gemini and Virgo because both of those signs are ruled by Mercury, right? Okay. In esoteric herbalism, for baths, the herbs are Abre Camino, Arasa Condoro, Oregano, Lavender, and Larkspur. The oils are Lavender, 
and lily of the valley. And the incense is lavender and lily of the valley. The hekau, which means the mantras and the words of power. For the spiritual, it is aing. Aing is the word you would chant. And for the planetary, it is aung, brong, bring, brong. And as I said before, these words have a particular resonance more so than a meaning. The spiritual direction is northeast and the mundane direction is south. The personality portfolio is through its actions on the Kaya bit, which is the animal spirit, the cool and dry energy of Mercury makes the personality sphere nine. <coughs> emotional traits. This is it. The positive emotional traits. Sharp and witty, fond of travel, critical in a positive way, able to separate issues based on externals, loquacious, diplomatic, cold and pedantic, pedantic, meaning syllogistic, logical minded, highly dependent on information, and communicative. The negative is negatively critical, loquacious, busybody, opinionated, inconstant in belief, pretending to know yet ignorant, mischief maker, gossiper, scheming, cunning, argumentative, proud, sly, lying, and, sh and selfish, which some of these uh, have been attributed to the sign of Gemini. When we're talking about a dark-sided Gemini person, that thing about the uh, busybody and gossiping and stuff like that, mischief maker, <laughs> has been attributed to Gemini. And well, this is the sign of Sebek, which corresponds to Gemini because it is ruled by Mercury. All right. So basically, this is like a uh, Kemetic astrology. That's what we're we're dealing with right here. Okay, so the mental traits: segregative thinking, labeling, defining, the verbal clothing of what is known, felt, and perceived, syllogistic logic, imitation, and that's why they use the sign. The symbolism of a dog-headed man because it's all about language and labels which is a very Western thing right and Western culture feels that definitions and names and labels is a very important thing they confuse the label that they put on things with the knowing of the thing which is a very Western thing which we can't really talk about it right now <laughs> is how they screw up a whole lot of the esoteric things because they are segregative in thinking, analytical more so than uh, being able to bring things together. They are very analytical. They separate things. They look at life in separations. Thus, we have racism. <laughs> they can't see people as just being human beings. They look at them based on colors or other types of uh, defining ways, okay? Because that's what they are about. And the comparison between canines is that canines are very good at being able to follow commands, word commands, but we know that the dogs can't break down the meanings of the words that they are following the commands of. If you say sit, <laughs> the dog will sit. But he can't define sitting. He just knows that the sound of that word sit goes with him putting his butt down on floor. <laughs> and that's what this whole thing is about when they use this canine headed man to uh, define this aspect of our psyche. 
of our minds, our ability to label things is an important thing. But when we are overly focused in it, the way Western uh, Eurocentrism is, it becomes a problem as we see the problems of the Eurocentric uh, world as of right now and the uh, chaos that's a part of it based on this whole segregative racialism kind of stuff that goes on. All right. Social correspondences, quick-witted people, good learners from mere observation, even without a teacher, careers, functions, so-called intellectuals, scholars, academicians, students, teachers, ambassadors, astrologers, mathematicians, clerks, technicians, relatively inexperienced lawyers, preachers, teachers, traders, young men, office workers, printers, schemers, schemes, financial, etc., thieves, journalists, good speakers, diplomats, politicians, and specialists. Spiritual portfolio, spiritual function, however pragmatic and necessary for the manipulation of physical phenomena, the mastery of definitions, names, and descriptions, the fundamental element of our education does not constitute knowledge of reality. Proceeding with awareness of this limitation will bring us good fortune. If we understand this about ourselves, if you know the definition of God, but you don't know God, okay, there's two things. If you understand that just because you know the definition, <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean you have experienced God. If you understand this, <laughs> then you're in a good way. But most people don't understand, and that's why it's such a humongous mess in our religious uh, sphere of our world as of right now, pretty much, okay? And why there's so much confusion and so many people feel lost, spiritually speaking, okay? Okay, proceeding with awareness of this limitation will bring us good fortune, but proceeding without awareness of this limitation, misfortune, we speak glibly of the person coming into being in the third month of gestation of life, of arising out of the chance coming together of non-living particles in the same breath that we give better odds to a random assortment of 800 thousand words and definitions on index cards being tossed in the air and falling in alphabetical order. And with pride, we call ourselves scientists. Let me reread that, okay? <laughs> Misfortune. We speak glibly of the person coming into being in the third month of gestation. There are lots of people, okay, let me, let me try to break this down. There are lots of people who don't feel that life starts at conception. <laughs> a lot of people feel that there is no such thing as life at conception. They don't believe that there is life of the embryo until it is an embryo, I mean, the, until it's a fetus. In other words, when the egg comes together with the sperm, they don't feel that that represents life. Whereas those of us who know, know that life starts the minute that that egg hits that sperm, that sperm hits that egg, and even before then, to be honest about it. Now, these people who feel that there is no such thing as life coming into being, and they feel that it doesn't come into being until the third month. <laughs> and uh, another thing they believe is of life arising out of the chance coming together of non-living particles. And in the same breath, okay, they, they believe these two things. And in the same breath, we give better odds to a random assortment of 800,000 words and definitions on index cards being tossed in the air and falling in alphabetical order. And with pride, we call ourselves scientists, meaning that there are a lot of people out here that don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> but they feel that they are scientists. 
scientists. There's lots of scientists that are very ignorant. <laughs> we know that. Okay, they think they know, but they don't know. They're basing their knowledge on being able to assort different aspects and put labels on them. <laughs> Okay, special correlates, the backslash to Hootie. To remind people that wisdom is not represented by the accumulation of information. Okay, <laughs> which is a very westernized way of thinking. We think that because we have read many books, we have accumulated a whole lot of information on index cards or wherever else in computers. We feel that we have knowledge. No knowledge is one thing, and information is another. <laughs> so, Sebek slash Tehuti, to remind people that wisdom is not represented by the accumulation of information, the comedic men of wisdom used the dog-headed ape, Awan, a very cunning and imitative animal, and hence a Sebek type to symbolize education as the aping, which is imitation, of wisdom. At best, the most it can do is inspect the measuring hand of the scale of balance, record the verdicts, and chastise the pig. Okay, our brother Rot and Nefer Amen, I'm telling you. <laughs> Let's get a close-up. Okay, the dog-headed man. He has his place, okay? That aspect of the spirit has its place, okay? It, it records things. It writes things down. It, can, it, it uh, has names for things. But that doesn't mean it, under, it understands what it's dealing with, okay? It doesn't have knowledge, okay? Or wisdom, necessarily, just because it has names of things, okay? It have a catalog of different things does not mean it knows what those things are <laughs> okay that is the dog-headed man okay he apes okay he copies he doesn't know for sure <laughs> he pretends to know that's an aspect of the spirit of man okay Sebek Ma'at Ma'at is the means of giving order to thinking and provides the truth premise that has eluded Western logicians from the days of the Greek philosophers. And remember, I'm talking about our ancient African Kemetic ancestors, okay, who understood this stuff thousands of years ago, okay? <laughs> All right. Sebek Het Heru. This is the configuration of the hermaphrodite. Verbal thinking that is guided by images, descriptions, gain coherence, unity, and a certain degree of objective reality. While we must experience something in order to describe it, we can easily delude ourselves with definitions, which essentially are hearsay verbal explanations not necessarily associated with experience. And Sebek Osset, all of the beliefs and rationalizations about life which are carried out in the at the eighth sphere level are based on our identification with our persons. How lucid, however lucid, they are sources of self-delusion, maya, as they cannot uplift us. And that's one aspect of understanding of the metuneter. We, as human beings, can identify with our, our higher spirit, okay? Or we can identify with our, our person aka personality meaning well I am uh, shy and therefore that's the way I'm gonna always be for the rest of my life but if you identify with your higher self you know that you are all things okay and if you started out shy you can easily work on that and change and not be shy so there's the difference right there the higher 
realm of understanding of your your higher self doesn't identify with being shy even if that's how you incarnated personality wise when you were born okay doesn't mean that's who you actually truly are you are the higher self which incorporates all okay now the key phrases disunion due to segregated thinking through the use of clever tactics clever words adroitness by paying attention to details pride in one's education logical ability verbal ability litigations arguments having the facts data being informed now let me just stop right there for a second and say something a lot of times you will see this kind of stuff when you watch the regular uh, like you watch CNN and those kinds of uh, stations oh man okay good <laughs> you watch CNN and those kind of stations and their shows that they have where they have the host who is he, he argues he invites different people on his show just so that he can argue uh, let me name one of those people. Uh, Bill, no, what was that fool's name? I don't remember. He's very well known for this. He, he just he's got an attitude about him that's just disgusting. He comes, he sits there on his show, and then different people come in and they they debate different topics. And he he's very good at just yakking and talking in a way where he makes even the most How can I say this? They they manage to belittle just any kind of topic, especially when it comes to racism and things like that. And just very smoothly, very slickly, very nasty. They take facts and twist them all out of all kinds of logical shape. And they do this in such a way that leaves the person just very upset because they're just very good at using words and twisting those words around and pretty much you can say anything with the twisting of words if you're good at it. We would say those kind of people are subject minded people. Okay, they know how to juggle words around, you know, and make people and quiet people down and shut them up pretty much even when they in their power to juggle their words are dead wrong, okay? <laughs> they still have that ability to do that and that's that's a lawyer kind of thing okay <laughs> lawyers are good at that kind of thing too so you can lie very smoothly very slickly very easily when you have that kind of an ability Sebek <laughs> okay key phrases disunion due to disunion okay disunion due to segregated thinking through the use of clever tactics, clever words, adroitness, by paying attention to details, pride in one's education, logical ability, verbal ability, litigations, arguments, having the facts, data being informed. Yeah, they can talk about, they can make something like killing somebody dead in the street seem like a correct thing, you know? by the time they finish using their words and juggling them all around. We don't even want to go too far into that. Okay, biological correspondences. Okay, physiology. Mercury governs the functions of the motor and sensory nerves. Pathology. Neuroasthenia, nervous irritability, asthma, bronchitis, stertorous breathing, Neuralgia, speech impediments, comedic therapeutics, nervine emollient, Chinese medicine, lung slash large intestine system, wind disease patterns. Okay, my people, so that's the first breakdown of Sebek. And now I'm going to read from. The Metutu, I believe. The deities of the Metutu. The deities of the Metuneter. So I'm going to read a little bit more about Sebek. Okay. 
Okay. Sebek is the name given to the planet Mercury by the Egyptians during the Greco-Roman times. Earlier it was called Sebku. In astrology, Mercury is styled as the messenger of the gods. This is because it corresponds to the language verbalizing centers, Braca and Wernicke. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Okay, my people. That are located in the left hemisphere of the cerebrum, the brain. We must take note of the fact that all of our other faculties are only able to communicate sensations and images. Verbal thinking is a process of putting into verbal form, informing what is felt imaged or already known non-verbally. This will become very clear if you were to practice clipping your thought as soon as they begin to appear. You will realize that even though you suppressed the completion of the sentence or paragraph, you were still able to know what the words you were going to what the words were going to indicate. This is because the knowledge of what you clothe in thoughts precede the mental verbalization of such knowledge. The knowledge of what you clothe in thoughts precede the mental verbalization. Basically what he's saying is that you know what you're going to say before you say it. <laughs> you know it before you figure out what words you're going to use to, to convey it. Sometimes you'll hear, hear people say, I wish I could just explain to you what, I'm, what it is, you know. They know what they want to say, but the words may not come in the way they want. You know what it is you want to say. You know what you're thinking before you give words to what it is you're thinking. Ponder that, okay. <laughs> you know what it is you're thinking before you have the words to express them, okay. Think about that for a second. Okay, verbal thinking is a process of putting into verbal form, informing what is felt, imaged, or already known non-verbally. This will become very clear if you were to practice clipping your thoughts as soon as they begin to appear. You will realize that even though you suppressed the completion of the sentence, or paragraph, you were still able to know what the words were going to indicate. This is because the knowledge of what you clothe in thoughts precede the mental verbalization of such knowledge. Sebek translates these non-verbal messages into words. If the names, definitions, and logical activities concerning these nonverbal messages are in harmony with reality, then the way is open for the indwelling intelligence to extend its operations to the outer, career, marriage, etc. parts of our lives. Otherwise, it is closed. It is important to note that Western psychologists have overrated the value of this faculty obviously for the fact that it is the foundation of their technological and commerce oriented culture. Their unqualified statement that it corresponds to language cannot be accepted. To be precise, it corresponds to the verbalizing aspects of language. To be precise, it corresponds to the verbalizing aspects of language. It does not have the ability to process meaning, to understand in other words, which is the function of the right side of the brain, a fact that suggests how and why the left side of the brain is the chief source of mischief in the world. Long before Western scientists even suspected 
about the dualization of the brain, the Kabbalistical tradition had an extensive knowledge about it. Okay, quoting from the Zohar in the Kabbalah Unveiled, S. L. McGregor Mather states that. Okay, seven. When the inferior man descendeth into this world like unto the supernal form in himself, there are found two spirits, so that man is formed from two sides, from the right and from the left. 8. With respect unto the right side, he had Nish. Chamatha Kadisha, and I'm probably butchering that, okay. Neshamotha Kadisha, the holy intelligences, with respect unto the left side, Nefesh Chia, the animal soul. Okay, I'm going to reread that, okay. Long before Western scientists even suspected about the dualization of the brain. Okay, because they didn't always know there was a duality of the brain. They didn't know that there was a left side and a right side. Okay, Western scientists, okay, is what we're talking about. Okay, <laughs> they, didn't un they didn't understand this aspect of the brain until recently. <laughs> okay, but the Kabbalistical tradition had an extensive knowledge about it. They knew, okay, the Kabbalistic tradition of thousands of years ago knew about this, okay, they understood it. And this is the way they broke it down, okay. Quoting from the Zohar in the Kabbalah Unveiled, S. L. McGregor Mathers states that seven, I guess verse seven, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what book if, it, if that's the way it is in the Kabbalah or not. I've never read it. But seven, when the inferior man descended into this world, like unto the supernal form in himself, there are found two spirits, so that man is formed from two sides, from the right and from the left. Eight. With respect unto the right side, he had Nishamatha Kadisha, the holy intelligences. And with respect unto the left side, Nefesh Chia, the animal soul. So hear that. On the one side, there was what is Nishamatha Kadisha. Let me just spell it, okay, so that you guys can understand this. It's spelled N S H M T H A K M Q D I S H A. Okay, two words. Neshamotha Kadisha. The holy intelligence is, is what that is, okay? And with respect unto the left, Nefesh Chia. Spell N P S H C H I H. Okay, Nefesh Chia. And they've added extra uh, vowels to, to be able to pronounce the word, but it's spelled here without those vowels. Okay. <coughs> and it has to do with, yeah, I'm not even going to try to break that down. But basically they're saying on the one side there are the holy intelligences and on the other side the animal soul. So in the Kabbalah it was known, okay, this aspect of the human, the human being, the brain of the human being, okay. And now nine, man sinned, sinned, S-I-N-N-E-D, man sinned and was expanded on the left side. And then they who are formless were also expanded. That is, those spirits of matter who receive dominion in the inferior paths of the soul of Adam, whence arouse concupiscence, 
Okay, and there it is. <coughs> Let me take a little bit of water. This is extremely uh, esoteric, but very important to okay. And then our brother Ra Nefer Amen states there are few things that can rival the possession of a great deal of information without understanding which we can say western man has a whole huge amount of information and no understanding generally speaking okay because I'm not going to even try to go too far into that. <clears throat> we know why. <laughs> All right. Sebku, Sebek, and Sobet are etymologically related to Seb, from whence Seba and Sebao are derived. Also, Seb, also Geb, is a name for the earth god. Sebek or Sebku corresponds to information derived from earthly experiences from outside of ourself as opposed to the spiritually intuitive wisdom. We also have Seba to educate. Seba and Seba spell S-B-A. Seba to educate. Sebau school. Sabat pupils and Sabai teacher. Sebek is the faculty that enables us to separate and label parts of a whole or members of a group on the basis of their external differences like skin color. <laughs> Without this faculty we would look at an event or thing and not be able to distinguish its parts or phases. Yet because of it we segregate things and events that belong together into airtight compartments based on their superficial external differences and thus create a host of problems in the world. This is the source of all the hypocritical acts, contradictions, and failure to transfer what is learned in a situation to analogous situations. The segregating function of Sebek is chiefly supported by the verbal functions of language, definitions, descriptions, and naming. To define a thing is to explain what it is and is not. That is, to segregate it from other things. Few people know that verbal thinking, with its definitions and names, is an obstruction to acquiring the, the knowledge of reality. When most people look at a thing or event, they fail to see what is really there because the Sebek faculty interposes the definitions and formulas that have been fed us via the educational process. Even where the definitions are useful and correct, there is still a process of substituting the symbols representing reality for the reality itself. Thus, to know reality, the thinking process must be stilled. The Sebao, plural of Seba, are therefore all individuals whose lives are determined by earth-born information as opposed to spiritual teachings and the in intuition from the wisdom faculty to Huti. This is why the Sebao were considered the enemies of Ra and of Osar. That is, earthborn information closes the way to the development of our life force and our spiritual growth. Sobek corresponds to the side of Sebek as the guardian, the guardian of the threshold. Sobek symbolized the crocodiles which closed the way to Arabians attempting to smuggle themselves into Kamet. We find the same throughout Africa where cognate deities like Alegba, etc. are also the guardians at the entrance of shrines, homes, etc. 
Anpu called Anubis by the Greek and Apuat, opener of the way, two aspects of the mercurial principle Sebek shared the duty of guiding the deceased in the underworld to Ma'at's hall of justice where the heart, the will, is weighed. The deceased in the case are symbols of the person undergoing spiritual initiation as it results in dying to certain things in the world as well as to the personality. See Seker. This is why reformed Christians say they are born again. The underworld, Tuat, Amenta, etc., corresponds to the subconscious, to which the focus of consciousness is transferred during trance. Anpu and Apuat are depicted as canine headed men because the faculty of cleverness, among others that they represent, is the dominant trait in dogs, foxes, jackals, etc. The ability of canines to learn to respond to a large number of verbal commands is also well known. Okay. Yes, my people, we are working it out. I can't see my, oh yeah, 41 minutes, okay. These videos are kind of long because there's a lot of information here so I want to be able to bring it all to you from our book the Metu Netter this is all to help us understand these principles these aspects of the spirit so that we can uh, learn this particular oracle deck okay that's why I am doing this, my people. <laughs> okay, so the Metutu, fundamental principles. Okay, Seker, with its roots in Amen and Osar. Seker, mm -mm, not Seker, Sebek. Okay. Woo! I thought I had just messed up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, my people. All right, Sebek. Perhaps the best defin description of the problems resulting from the use of our syllogistic, logical, intellectual faculty without the guidance of the synthetical faculty, the fourth sphere, which is Ma'at, is symbolized by the Hydra of Greek mythology. For every head that was cut off from this monster, two grew in its place. This is a very accurate characterization of the majority of proposed logical solutions. Because this faculty can only focus on a part at a time, a proposed solution to a problem creates a number of unforeseen problems in other parts. Such problems are avoided by realizing that we cannot construct holes from the logical manipulation of species and parts, the Tower of Babel Syndrome, and that the syllogistic logical function must be applied only after the whole has been perceived. The perception of concrete holes is carried out by Het Heru, which is the imagination, and the perception of abstract holes is carried out by Ma'at and Tehuti. The last two faculties are the only sources of solutions to specific problems that do not create problems elsewhere. This is the function of wisdom and divine law. The second step in developing ourselves spiritually and promoting our ability to succeed in our undertakings and in life involves the unification of our logical intellect with divine law. Okay my people and 
the shaping factors of success are as follows with Sebek. Spiritual, because there's a spiritual and a mundane. Spiritual, an enlightened will, Heru positive, knows that the true purpose of cleverness which is what this whole thing is all about cleverness okay what passes for intelligence in the West and there's the problem cleverness <laughs> is not intelligence okay <laughs> we can turn on CNN and learn that okay an enlightened will knows that the true purpose of cleverness what passes for intelligence in the West and education, or knowledge of techniques, details of the steps, and processes of carrying out a task, are for easing the way. That is, for the purpose of carrying out tasks with a minimum of effort and time, and maximum results. The mundane understanding, same as the spiritual, in addition, it is the ability to establish the legal connection between sequential units and between parts through their outer form. It is important to keep in mind that the reason why syllogistic or Cartesian logic cannot give insight into the truth of premises is due to the fact that it cannot establish the logical connections between parts and the whole to which they belong, as it only deals with the outer form of things. When you receive this metut in a reading, it may mean that you may have to secure the assistance of specialists and technicians in the field. People of the book. Okay. Alright. So yes, my people, is there anything more that I need to read to us? I think that I have done it all so far for the understanding of Sebek. The dog-headed man, okay, Sebek. <laughs> Alright my people, thank you all for being here and listening to this particular aspect, this particular episode of uh, reading of the Metuneter, the Tree of Life, going from 10 all the way up to 1. I just did 8, Sebek. I've already done 9, which is Offset, and 10, which is Geb. Those are other videos that I'm going to connect with this one. So you might want to watch those if you are uh, an up-and-coming oracle reader of this particular oracle, the Tree of Life Meditation System and Oracle. The Tree of Life, the Metunetter Oracle is a whole thing. It's the meditation system and it is the oracle as well. Okay, you want to develop uh, you want to develop in your ability to use this oracle so that you can give very powerful readings to your clients then you might want to listen to Offset and Gab to give yourself a better understanding and I base everything that I'm reading is coming from the book itself, Metuneter. And this is how it's been broken down by our Shechem or Shechem Ra and Nefer Amen, who has brought this powerful information to us in this day and time from the Akashic Records. Okay, he intuited this. Okay. <laughs> He brought it back from that spiritual place, okay? The powerful information and system of spiritual cultivation that our ancient African Kemetic 
ancestors used as a way to develop themselves okay not to say that each and every one of them went all the way from Geb to Asar, but if they were focused on trying to reach that high level, a yogic kind of level, okay, Asar, okay, then you're in a kind. If if every if everybody in the in the if all the people. <laughs> are trying to reach this level then you are pretty much developing a nirvana kind of place right <laughs> you're developing a utopia and if you're living in something of a utopia because everybody's trying to be their best then you are in a place where there is very little of the negativity that holds people back therefore people are open and able to develop their creativity to the highest level and maybe that's why they were building such astrological places as those pyramids okay <laughs> it's more to it than the fact that they were pyramids they were sundials sun clocks uh, there was just all kinds of things going on those things connected with astrology okay <laughs> and I can't even don't even ask me to try to break that down because I can't but what I'm doing is reading from the Metu Nedher and it's going to help you to be an excellent reader of this oracle, okay? Basically what you want to do is understand the ten levels of the tree of life, which are the ten levels of the spirit of man, which means men and women, okay my people? Now the next one I'll be reading is seven, which is Het Heru, if I'm not mistaken the god of the goddess of beauty let me find that card het heru okay here she is het heru okay she's beautiful look at her she's smelling a beautiful flower she's gorgeous her colors are green and gold as you can see She's Venus, you see. Representation of Venus right there, right? Alright, so that's going to be the next one I read. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel, which is You Are Leaders on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe because when I do these readings, I'm not, I can't tell you exactly what day it's going to be on. <laughs> I have to be, uh, drawn by the spirit to do it I just don't do it just off the top of my head because it's, it's a lot of work involved with this even though I'm just reading <laughs> the book but I suggest that you sign up for you are leaders okay and I will be more than grateful to you if you do okay thank you all for watching this particular episode and blessings of peace and love to each and every one of you <laughs> make sure you return okay and make sure you share this video okay we are trying to regain our power as African people and we do it without apology without explanation we do it because we have the right to do it and so therefore that's why I'm reading this all right, peace and blessings to each and every one of you.